Hi friends, welcome back. It's Friday. Let me just adjust my camera. Um, it's May, it's May. I'm so happy. <laughs> I feel spring has totally arrived where we live and my, my poor husband who has allergies is feeling it. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of pollen in the air, a lot of birds and butterflies around. It's, it's, it's nice. It's nice to, it's nice to have some good weather for a change. Um, we've had it for a little while here, but I know since the pandemic, uh, all that started and the closures, we have had some days where it's been rainy. And so any bright sunny days that can lighten your mood are well worth it. All right, so today we are working on our final project in Paper Fun Week. Um, I, you know, I'm a huge paper fan. I probably could have filled two more weeks <laughs> just with paper projects, but we're gonna round out today's, uh, the, or this week's series of demos with something really fun. We're gonna make a little paper toy out, uh, well, a toy out of paper. We're gonna make a top and they look a little bit like this. So they're real cute, um, a lot of steam in here, and I'm excited to share them with you in a moment. So a couple things I wanna talk about first. If you, uh, if you got my email this morning and you're on my email list, you know that you needed to print a template. The other materials that we're gonna to use today are bamboo skewers, markers, we're gonna need tape and a glue stick, scissors, and if you have them, you don't, this isn't required, but it's a nice add. If you have little wooden beads, that would be great. Um, I think that's it. Oh, and you need a glue stick and a glue gun. That helps. You need that. All right. So I am going to go ahead and turn my camera around. And I also want to make sure, here's a little preview of what we're doing. Let me turn my lights on. I wanna make sure that you guys take advantage of the awesome giveaway that this week's sponsor is uh, has provided for all of my viewers. So I'm happy that they have done that. The, the sponsor is Printworks. And I'm gonna just show you some of the things they have and that they're giving away to two of you guys. So they make this awesome cardstock. They have pastel colors. They have bright colors and then of course you know i'm going to save the best for last they have neon colors neon is my favorite um so i've been printing all my templates this week on their card stocks and um they also obviously make white <laughs> so i've been using a variety of their products this week and it's been awesome they're really great quality so i hope you enter their giveaway I'm going to go ahead and put the information um, in the description below at the end of this video so that you guys can absolutely be a part of that because it ends, you have until Sunday to enter, and this is my last live video until then, so I just want to make sure that you know that you have, that you got to go do that. All right, so now let's go ahead and I'm going to um, get started on today's project. So what we're doing is we're going to make these paper tops, Okay. I'm just gonna go ahead and spin a couple of these. Now it's really interesting because when I view these through the lens of the, the camera, I see a lot more of the design than I do when I my eye actually perceives, which is fascinating. Um, in, in a nutshell, for this, it's best if you can use cardstock because you'll get a nice thick, like you can hear it, right? Good really sturdy top. This one's made out of paper and it's it's not, it's totally doable and it works. Um, it's just a little more challenging to put together, I think, because it's so, it's a little more delicate. So just keep that in mind. If you do have cardstock, I highly recommend that you print on it. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Now, in this particular project, Contrast is really uh, important because when you spin these, the your eye can't perceive all the images that it's seeing as a top spins. So all your design work that we're gonna do in a second, it's hard for your eye to really perceive that when this is spinning. So the more contrast you have in your design, 
the better because your eye will pick up on little bits of that as the top spins. So for this, I'm gonna use a yellow template. I'm gonna use a couple of very highly contrasting colors. So black is obviously the best one to use for that because it's your eye can really perceive that. Um, and so I'm gonna start with that. Now, on this template, what you're gonna see, and when I first developed this, I should mention this, I said, go ahead and make your top and then decorate it after. Now, I realize some of you guys may be, depending on your age, it's hard, personally, even as an adult sometimes, to, to draw on a three-dimensional surface. So even though I first developed the project like that, I now would probably recommend that you decorate first, assemble later. The reason I did decorate it later originally was because it was a little easier to understand the design after you put it together. So sometimes it's hard to understand what you're decorating if you haven't already made the... the the um, project but I think you guys have got this and here's what I want to why I'm mentioning that so when we decorate this as you can see one part of the top is visible and the other part is going to be hidden on the underside so you only need to decorate half the template so it can be either this half or that half but if you draw like an imaginary line down the center or this line here that just know that you should decorate one side or the other, but not, you don't need to do both. You could do both and it would look probably pretty cool, but you don't have to. For sure you wanna do the top though. Okay, so I'm gonna add some black details in. Uh, what do we wanna do today? So I'm gonna try some things. I'm gonna try some thick lines and then I'm gonna try some thin lines and we'll see if that makes a difference with the top itself. So you guys can go ahead and start decorating your top. And you know, you could spend as much time as you want on this, um, or you can do kind of just simple, bold graphic designs. That's what I'm gonna do today. I'm gonna do just some, a little bit of a variety here. Unlike yesterday, we got into really, really detailed designs. And I find it really hard to make, frankly, just one of these. <laughs> um, once I start making these, there's like, oh, I wanna try that. And I would love to see what that looks like. Like if you did a rainbow top, which is what I was doing over here, and some different color variations. And in this case, since I'm doing all these um, dark lines and different line weights, I'm curious what they're gonna look like. So go ahead and keep decorating this. And then we'll just do a little bit of decoration and then we'll get onto the, into the design, into the uh, assembly. I'm gonna use a different color there. I'm gonna use my bright pink. See that looks on this, uh, looks good on the yellow. So if you wanna add color, you can. At a minimum, I do recommend that you use some black pen or marker. And if you want to add some other colors in, that's up to you. So if you put it on colored cardstock, obviously your colors are going to look a little bit different. Sometimes that's why I test mine first on a part of the, the template that I'm not, you know, down here. I'll run the marker just to see what it looks like on the colored cardstock. There we go. That's going to be fun. Let's see. What else should we do? Let's do a little bit of blue. See if that looks kind of green, huh? A little bit. Let's do this here. So obviously using colored cardstock already adds a layer of color to your top and makes it kind of playful without you having to do all this coloring. Um, so it's up to you. There's an infinite, infinite amount of possibilities with this. <laughs> and lastly, let's do a little bit of coloring in some of these, why not? And then I'm gonna start assembling this. So I hope you guys have some fun stuff planned for the weekend, even though, even though we're not going anywhere, um, it's nice just to kind of treat our schedules like we used to a little bit, I think. I like to take the weekends off um, and just recoup a little bit, do some reading 
that sort of thing. So I hope that you guys have some, you know, movie planned, maybe a, a good, a different meal. My son asked me to make pretzels again. That's a shout out to my friend Anne, who has a phenomenal pretzel recipe on her, in one of her, in her online magazine, Steam Explorers. <laughs> okay, let me add, let's see, let's add a little bit of green and then I'm going to, I'm telling you, I could totally get carried away here. Um... Oh, that's so fun. I like this design. Okay. Now I think I should probably stop and start assembling. And then, of course, I have to see what yellow looks like on here. Yellow on yellow. It looks pretty. All right. Let's do this. I just have one section, not color. I'm going to do it. Oh, right here. All right, now we're gonna assemble. Okay, I'll get carried away, I'm telling you, you guys. Okay, so to assemble this, let's, what we're gonna do is we're going to start cutting out, okay, on the edge, there's a thick black line. So we wanna cut along all of the very thick black lines in this template. On some of my templates, I have dashed lines for where we're gonna fold. In this template, the, da the fold lines are just a thin solid line, so don't cut those, cut the thick, solid line. Also, you'll notice I've got a thick solid line that goes through the center point and ends in a dot in two places. That's because that's where we are going to put our skewer through the paper top. So if you, when you're cutting this, make sure that you cut a little bit past there. Okay. That's why it says to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and start that by doing it now same over here so we're moving on like I said to the cutting part if you're still decorating you can either set that aside set your top down and just kind of watch this part or you can always like I said before you can decorate this once it's assembled as well and yeah, we're gonna cut along these lines if you guys make this I had such a got such a kick yesterday out of seeing uh, your paper houses when I, I do this demo twice, so sometimes I do, I do it every day on Facebook first, um, and over there you're you're able to post images. So on that um, video, I had quite a few people share their uh, paper houses that they made. If you're joining me here on YouTube, which I love YouTube, <laughs> you can always go ahead and go on Instagram and tag at Babble Dabble Do. And that will get you, then, then I will see that and I can, um, like basically what I'm saying is share your image of your top or your paper house or whatever you've made from one of our tutorials, tag me and then I get to see it and I like to share that with, with you guys and with the community because it's fun to see what y'all make. All right, so now we've got this cut out, I'm going to go ahead and start folding it. So... As usual, we're gonna flip it over to fold. I'm gonna flip it, I'm gonna do the main fold first. Now this one, because we're folding triangularly, it's a little bit, it's not quite as intuitive as say our, our uh, doodle cubes, which we did on Wednesday. Um, so we're gonna fold on all the big, on all the solid lines first. I, and then we're gonna fold the parts that say glue. These are solid lines as well, but I personally like to fold the main sections and then go back and all the, all the um, areas that say glue, that's a tab. So I do that after I do the main folds. And as I always tell my students, you guys, we're gonna fold first and kind of get the crease in the right spot. Then we're gonna take our fingernail and drag it along there to get a really crisp fold. That's important. Okay, I'm gonna keep doing that. And there we go. Uh, now I'm gonna move on to this side, the colorful side. I cannot wait to see what this one looks like when I spin it. I think it's gonna look pretty cool. So there's a lot of steam in this project. There's a lot of sign, obviously there's a lot of artfulness to the design work that you do um, and pattern making. There's also what you're gonna find is when you spin it, depending on what you use on the bottom of your top, that's going to affect how it spins. So whether you use a bead, a marble, or nothing at all, which I'll show you in a minute, 
that will affect how your top spins and the friction that it gets with the surface that it's spinning on. So once these are done, you guys, we're gonna start folding the tabs. Also, there's a lot of optical uh, science involved. As I was mentioning before, like what you see, what you perceive, and what your eye perceives when something is spinning is, is, a, uh, is really fascinating. Um, when, when colors spin, like a rainbow of colors, you actually don't end up seeing, it's spinning so quickly your eye can't perceive it. So what your eye does is it blends them all together. Your brain blends those images together and it looks almost like a white. And then if you have the dark colors, you'll see they end up blending into like a circle or a different shape. You'll, I'm gonna show a couple of these tops and you kind of understand that. Okay, once you get that done, we're gonna glue this together. So we're gonna use a glue stick. Oops, and we're gonna use tape. You're probably gonna need both. When I first wrote this project up years ago, I used rubber cement, but nobody has rubber cement anymore. Most people don't. I liked it and I still like it because it's um, very tacky and but also really strong and, and repositionable. But I just, I just haven't bought it in a while. Um, oh, that could have been a better, <laughs> a better alignment could have happened there. Anyways, then you're gonna start gluing these sections together where it says that where it had the tab, it says glue. You're gonna try to press these in. And because you're now, you got a hollow shape, this is a little bit tricky. So that's why I like to have the tape as well because you're probably gonna need to tape along all of your connection edges, okay? Um, and I, and I, that's why I ended up using rubber cement ages ago when I first did this, because it was a little stronger and it was able to kind of hold these together better. But most of us have a glue stick. And so if you're using the glue stick, you're going to use tape as well. And that will just kind of help keep everything nice and solid. Okay. I think that's it. Got it. Awesome. So now your next step. And this is one where you might need to enlist a grown-up. We're going to take a bamboo skewer. If you don't have a bamboo skewer, you you could, I haven't tried it yet. Well, you know what you could use? I, I know I suggested in my past um, tutorial a straw. You could use a pencil. You just may need to cut out this um, area a little bit bigger so you can fit it through. A skewer is convenient because we're going to end up poking it through the top. But a sharp pencil would do the same. Okay, so now we don't need this whole skewer for our project, and you might need to grab a grown-up for this part. We're going to end up cutting the skewer. We're going to cut it in about half. And if you've ever cut wood before, it is a little tricky, and that's why I like grown-ups or older siblings to do this. Um, partly because you can slip, the, the, the scissors can slip, and I don't want anyone to get injured. Um, and partly because sometimes when you cut this, part of the skewer flies off and it can, you know, it can hit something or someone. So we don't want to do that. So this is how I cut a skewer. And if you're not comfortable with this, absolutely grab your parent for this. So I take my scissors and I kind of ru run the scissors along the edge and I rotate my skewer a little bit. I kind of, what I'm trying to do is make a groove, whoops, a groove in the skewer itself. And then when it's, I got a decent groove in there, I snap it, okay? That way it doesn't go flying off across the room and it's a little safer. So now I have my skewer and I wanna take the pointy end and I wanna grab a bead as well. If you're using a bead, you don't have to use a bead, but I find that it gives your top a little more surface area on which to spin. And it makes it a little more foolproof, I think. So now we're gonna kind of find the center point here and poke our, top, our uh, skewer through, We've got a helicopter above us. And now after that's poked through, I'm gonna find it on the bottom like that, okay? Now you could leave your top like this. Um, two things though. First off, your skewer is probably gonna end up rotating in, in the top. So you wanna make sure that your top is secured to that the paper top is secured to the skewer, so I use hot glue for that. Okay, so I'm gonna do that on the top for sure. And let that dry. 
And then depending on what you want to do, you can add like a wood bead to the bottom. That just makes it, like I said, a little more fool foolproof, in my opinion. Uh, makes it a little easier to spin or to make for a longer spin. Okay, so that's how I do that. And I'm gonna let it dry, okay? While that's drying, I wanna show a couple other things. If you're using a marble at the bottom, you wanna poke everything through and then you wanna trim your skewer, oops, and re-poke it through and then, and then glue a marble on. Um, basically, there'd be a top around this, but you wanna glue the, the bottom edge of the skewer to the marble. You can't really glue a, a really fine tip point to a marble, so the more surface area you can create to glue, the better. Or you can use none at all and just have a pokey, your skewer kind of poking through the bottom. I think this actually be a really great science experiment to see what produces the best and most, um, which top spins the longest, depending on what you use at the bottom. Obviously a marble has a really smooth, smooth surface. This bead has a little bit of a flat surface, which makes it a little more easier. And then this one has a one point. Sometimes a point is great, but sometimes a point is hard. To, you, if you get it right, it spins for a while. But if you get it, it, it also sometimes you don't get it right and it stops. So let's see, let's see what happens with our top now. Woo, it looks so good. And like I said, it looks so different when I'm looking at it in the video than it does to my, to my eye. My eye sees a lot less of the definition of the pattern. And let me show you, for instance, this is a really good example of what happens, what your eye can perceive. So this one has all these dark black dots, but when I spin it, you're, I bet you're gonna see something else. Although, let's see what the camera does. So on camera, I still see black dots. In my eye, and if you made something like this, I'm seeing a lot more of a, of a like a, a band of black, like a stripe. Let's see what happens with this one. Nice. Now these tops, so I'm really seeing the black center and the black edges. Um, let's try the rainbow and see what you guys see. Now I have a lot of tops on my blog and so these are not the ones that spin the longest, but they're certainly some of the prettiest in my opinion. And this is an example, again, my eye is seeing this a little different than what the camera picks up on. Whoops. Um, but when, you're, when something spins very quickly, you don't end up seeing the colors defined. You end up seeing kind of an amalgamation of the colors, and oftentimes it's white if it's spinning fast enough. So let's go ahead and spin one more time, and then I'm going to turn my camera around. Oh, that one turned out good. I like it. Notice how I can't see any of these little detailed colors at all when it spins, but I do see the orange edge and I do see the thick black bands. Cool, right? Okay, let me turn this around. All right. All right, you guys. So, oh, turning my light off. That's it for this week's project. Um, well, that's for today's project and this week's uh, series of projects on featuring paper. Um, a couple things. So get on my email list. I'm gonna drop a bunch of links in the description below. Get on my email list because I always send out the materials list in advance every single morning. Um, I also wanna let you know that I am here at 1.30 every day on YouTube. Uh, so if this is something you like to do, you know, I hope you get on the email list and that you'll join me every day at 1.30 with your kids. Um, and we'll make, we'll make cool projects together. I plan on keeping this series going for at least another three weeks, maybe another month, um, maybe longer. I mean, I don't, there's a lot of uncertainty right now into how long we'll be in, uh, in a stay at home situation. But for me, I think we're, where I live, we're probably gonna be doing this for a while. So I am happy to come live come on here live every day and be with you guys and share something fun, fun to do and fun to make. Um, also, uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Okay. Subscribe. <laughs> and, 
as well, don't forget about that giveaway that I mentioned. Um, that is going to end on Sunday, and so I really want you guys to be a part of that. And those are all links I'll, I will be throwing in the description a little bit later um, today. All right, you guys, that's it. Uh, thanks for joining me, and I will see you back on Monday. Have a wonderful weekend, you guys. Bye.